Oh, he's rolling your eyes. Good morning to uh, Jessica's husband also who's driving the car. Well, good morning and welcome back once again to Photography Weekly, episode number 34 for Sunday, November 27th, 2011. Coming up in today's show, custom white balance and why is it important and how do we do it anyway? What, what the heck do we even need to bother with custom white balance? And then a lot of you or some of you out there have been putting on Facebook, you're having a little bit of trouble extracting somebody from a picture. So I thought we need to roll back a little bit and we're going to look at a program that comes with Photoshop elements called the Magic Extractor. And it makes extractions extremely easy and you don't have to worry too much about that selection brush type thing. And I'll show you how to use that. And then this weekend I did some programming and I came up with a really nice quick and free way to install actions because I received a lot of emails that said, Jack, I would use actions. I have windows seven. I, I don't know where all these folders are. This is hidden. I don't know what to do. I wanted to make it easy. I, I told you guys about creating actions. Now I wrote a program that will install them for you and I will show you that program and I'll show you where to get it because it's being released. As Steve Jobs used to say, it's being released today that's right today it'll be available to you for download uh, on my website and i'll show you where that's at so sit back grab a cup of coffee or another beverage and let's get started here with episode number 34 Okay, there we go. So now we uh, have the opener down. Uh, like I said, this is totally new software. I'm kind of working my way through it there to uh, figure out how it all works uh, to make sure everything works well and uh, everything looks good. So and everybody's already enjoying the new HD camera there. So that's that's a good deal. Okay, so that is the opener. That's what we're going to be looking at today. Uh, like I said, custom white balance is where we're going to start. Um, you know, what is white balance anyway? Why do we even need to worry about white balance? And I'm sure a lot of you out there are already saying, Jack, geez, we use custom white balance every day. We understand it. We're good. But you know yourself, a lot of people watch this show. We have many different talents out there. So I wanted to come to you and say, look, this is why you do it. This is how you do it. And this is kind of what white balance means. Now, the first thing white balance does for us is it gives us correct color in our pictures. That's what you need to worry about. Did you ever take a picture um, anywhere and you take this shot and then you look at the back of the camera and you go, that's awful yellow. You know, these lights in here must be yellow. The lights themselves actually, if we look in a room, look in this room right now around me, I have what, three or four different uh, studio lights on right now. So... In this room right now, there is a ton of light, and all this light is white. But seriously and theoretically, the light itself is fluorescent tubes, and I have one incandescent bulb. So it's kind of a mixture of light here. But a fluorescent bulb is going to give you a light, like a bluish type of a light, a blue tint. Now, why is that? Well, the actual uh, real reason that is, is the reason light give off different types of temperature is because light itself gives off different types of heat. And you may or may not realize that. So white balance has always been based on the amount of heat that a light gives off. Now me, I kind of look at the back of the camera and I go, wow, that's yellow. What would I do? You don't just put your camera back in the case, which I've seen people do. Put the camera and say, Jack, I couldn't get pictures in that uh, auditorium or in that gymnasium because the lights are just not for photographers. No, the lights are not for the camera to be on automatic. That's what the lights are not for. So you take your camera and you just set the white balance. And if you watched my YouTube video yesterday, I did just a three-minute little uh, photography weekly tip of the week. And I talked about the program mode and automatic. You know, throw your, ca throw your camera, if you're not shooting on manual mode, throw it in program mode. At least then we can play with some different settings and just the white balance of your camera. Now, if your camera is a point and shoot, that's okay. You're not left out because they also come with white balance. 
So here's a tip. If you take a picture and you look on the back of the shutter, or on the back of the screen, oop, if I don't kill my microphone here or my camera. Um, so I look on the back of the screen, I look and I say, wow, that's awful yellow. What I need to do then right away is just change the white balance to a different setting and snap another picture. Folks, it's digital, right? Digital pictures are not that big of a deal. We can delete it if we don't like it. So take a lot of shots. That's the key element here. Now, and I don't know what everybody's shooting out there. Uh, the class I just recently taught, we had Nikons and we had one Canon. A Nikon guy I've been for a long time. Canon person I was at one time. I bought, well, I had one Nikon. I had bought the DSLR Rebel um, some time ago. Um, since then, I've sold it, so I don't know the settings of the camera as well as I know the Nikon. But on a Nikon, there's a way as I'm sure there's a lot of, now on the point and shoot cameras, not so much, but on the DSLRs, there's a way to do what's called a custom white balance. Why do you need a custom white balance? Well, if you're not shooting on camera raw, if you are, you can go get another cup of coffee or go get a donut right now and just skip this part of the video. Because if you're shooting on camera raw, it really doesn't matter because when you go back to the editor, you're going to choose your white balance and set it whatever you want to. That's the beauty of shooting raw. But with shooting... Uh, just straight JPEGs out of the camera. And let's say you're doing a wedding. It's kind of what I refer to because that's basically what I do most of. And I'm at the wedding and I'm shooting away, shooting away, and I go home and the bride's gown is yellow. Is the bride going to buy those? Probably not. So you want to get a custom white balance. And I've learned some tricks over the years where it makes it a little easier to do. One trick, if you're shooting somewhere and there's something white there, a white tablecloth, uh, a pure white curtain, um, even the pure white, now you got to watch because a lot of times they're off-white, but the pure white um, uh, blinds over a window, so something that you can get a shot to take a reading with your camera with the light that's available. That's the trick, folks. That's what you want to do. So... Uh, so a lot of times I'll use the gown. If the gown is a pure white gown, I can take a shot and get a color, custom white balance on my camera and then set it to that setting and just start shooting away and my white balance will be great. Here's something else to remember. When you go from one place to another, such as we go from in the church, you know what church lighting looks like. Look at it this week when you're in church. Look up and look around how dim it is. So you're shooting with flash in the church. And then you go outside and you're shooting in direct sunlight or sunlight in general. What happens is, folks, when you go outside, reset your white balance. If you're shooting the white balance as you shot in the church, pictures are not going to come out right. Why? Right, because the available light changed and the type of lighting changed also. So there you go. So how do we do this custom white balance on this Nikon camera? Now, First, naturally, you turn it on, right? There you go. Now, this is a Nikon. And then, on your white balance settings, look at your, if you have a 35 millimeter DSLR, play around with it a bit, little bit and look at the settings. But if I hold my custom white balance or white balance down, there's some different settings here. Um, you know, you got the clouds for shady, you got the flash, you got the light, you got the fluorescent tube. <coughs> um and you got automatic mode. Hey, if all else fails, shoot one in automatic white balance and see what you get. You know, that's a good way to start. But what we're concerned about, and like I said, on the Nikon cameras, it is called pre, P-R-E. Now, so it's set at pre, and we're going to take a shot. Now, we need something that's extremely white. Or, or at your local photography store, or I don't know where I bought this from. Uh, this is a 18% <clears throat> gray card. You can see it right there with the camera. It's 18% gray card. Now, when you shoot 18% gray card with your camera, the camera is going to take it as a white card. It's going to get a white balance reading off the 18% gray card. Now, there's a way to do this, and there's a way not to do it. If you leave your camera on autofocus, good luck. 
There's nothing on here to focus to, folks. Your camera will do nothing but constantly run up and down, up and down. You know how that motor goes. So set your camera first on the manual, on your lens. You know, set your lens to manual mode. So you, or your focus to manual. Then what we do is we hold down the white balance and we get a little thing flashing that says pre. That means take a shot. I take a shot and you hopefully on the top, if you can see that. Whoop. Let's try it again. We're going to try to get this camera to work here for us today. We're going to try to uh, get this picked up. So I set this on pre. Take a shot. And hopefully right here, you should be seeing good. When you see that good, that means it took a good quality reading. And the camera is now set for custom white balance. Now, I love this D7000 because on my other ones, what you had to do was, and maybe on your camera, and it's okay because on the D80 it's that way, you would do a custom white balance shot, and then you would take a picture after that. And that picture would be what you would use. So you would choose like, like we used to take a picture of a church, um, maybe the, um, we would take a picture of the altar. <laughs> then I would know when I went in the church, I would choose the altar for my white balance for in the church. Outside, I would take a picture of a car, and I knew I was outside because that's where cars are, obviously. So you'd be outside, and you'd, you'd pick that picture of a car uh, outside. So, um, But on this D7000, there's actually three presets on it. There's a D1, D2, and a D3. So you can, it holds three custom white balances for you, so you can set that on there. So once again, it's really, really that easy. Um, if you don't have a gray card, like I said, look for something natural white uh, around you that you can take a picture of. Um, some people get messed up with that. They said, Jack, we took a picture of a flower uh, because it had a lot of color in it and we wanted to get the correct color and everything. So we took a picture of that to do white balance. That, that's not it. The camera wants to know what is white. That's what it wants to know. What's white in your scene? It will adjust the colors for you based on that white shot. So... There you have it. So that is the easiest way to explain custom white balance. Um, and I don't remember all the temperature either for all the settings. The trick is don't ever rely on where you're at. Now, here's what I mean by that. I talked to a uh, professional photographer one day and we were kicking around white balance. And what he said is when he shoots outside on sunny days, he starts by setting his white balance to shady. I don't know. He gets some really, really fantastic shots doing that. So there you have it. Um, so that's what he sets his to. Shady. Imagine that. Uh, let's put the cap back on the camera just because it's always a good thing to have the cap on the camera. There you go. And uh, we're going to turn here. Uh, just real quick, my belief on this. If you buy the Nikon line, Okay, if you buy the Nikon, the D, I think you can still get the D90. I've had the D70, the D80, the D90, and I got the D7000. At work, we have some folks buying the D3100, the D50, or the D5100s. Here's the problem with that. You want to know where the problem is? Here's the problem. Here's the difference. Those cameras are cheaper because the motor for the autofocus, these cameras are more expensive because the autofocus is in the body. So if you take off this, the autofocus is in here. The motor is inside the camera. On the cheaper cameras, the autofocus is in the lens. So here's why I don't want to buy those is because the lens I buy, um, if I buy a lens for my camera for $150, it's going to cost you $400 for the other camera. So that's why I don't uh, particularly like those cameras. Are they? They're great cameras. They work great. I, you know, we had people in my last uh, live class that use those, um, and they're relatively inexpensive. Right now, you probably pick one up for about four hundred bucks, and you're going to be very happy with it. it's going to work well. I try to look down the road. I don't know why, because I buy a new camera about every other year, so I don't know why I try to look down the road. But try to look down the road a little bit and say, what am I going to do with the camera later? If you're just going to take it on vacations or trips or concerts or arenas, buy one of those and you're going to be quite happy with it. Buy it with the 18, buy 
uh, 55 lens is what comes with it. You're going to be, be thrilled with it. I want to talk about how easy it is to make a selection by not using all the brushes and the selection stuff, and I'll show you that. So we're going to switch over to my desktop now. And we're going to talk you, take you uh, through that and show you how that actually works. So I'm going to turn away from the laptop here, and uh, we will see if we can get this started here. Let's get this mic down out of the way here. Okay, so we will try to get my desktop up here. We will uh, select an area here, I think. We'll use that. Just like so. Okay. I'll have to go over here and we'll say done selecting. And we're actually going to uh, maybe make that a little bigger. Let's see here. Yeah, we'll go to there. That looks good enough. Okay. Now we're going to dissolve into this. See here where we're at. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. Let's go back into this. Okay, so here we are, and we're going to be talking about... Let's see if I can bring this up. Okay. So now what we're going to be talking about is how to use this uh, thing called a magic extractor. And the reason I wanted to bring that up was um, how we can actually make an extraction but not make it too difficult. Let me put that back in the tab. That was from my show the other day, actually. Uh, let's see here. All right. Okay, so this is how you would use the magic extractor. Because normally we'd go over here and we would uh, click on these here and um, just seeing here how this is uh, coming up. All right. I want to try to show the uh, mouse pointer in this. There we go. Now we can do it. So I wanted to tell you, we normally would use these extractors over here. Uh, so there is the... Um, quick selection tool and that's what I use a lot I like the quick selection tool it works very very well the magic wand tool is probably what um, one of our and I just say one of our, I know who you are by looking at Facebook but I don't like to single anybody out during the live shows so you were probably using uh, like Kevin said the magic wand tool and selecting clicking on something that's making that weird selection and what happens when you get that weird selection is you don't really understand or see what you're selecting. Then we also have the um, magic lasso tool. Uh, we got the polygon tool and the magnetic lasso tool, which a lot of people like because it's really close to the Photoshop paths because you're, you're clicking and you're making points around something. It's more difficult for me to do that. So it, and this is almost like using, you know, using a computer. There's 5,000 ways to do something, and you have to choose what way you like to do it. That's the important thing. Next, there is the, uh, we have the rectangular tool and the elliptical tool where we can draw a circle around something. So those are ways that you can do this and, and extract something. You can actually pull something out and extract. But... I'm going to show you the magic extractor tool. And I did a video about this a long time ago. It's on YouTube. You can see it there. But what I wanted to do was take some time and show you today how that actually works. So here we go. First thing we're going to do is duplicate this as always. We always duplicate the safety measure. And you do that by either, on your, if you're on a Mac, do Command J. Now hold the Command key down and hit J. If you're on Windows, hit Control J. Like I said, I emphasize that because it's so important and there's a lot of new people that watch this show each week, So, and that's great. We want all the new people coming on board. With that, then we will go up, click on Image, 
And then we're going to use the magic extractor tool. And then it blows it completely out of the shot. Of course it would do that, wouldn't it? Let's try to make this a little smaller. I'm just trying to fit it here to the uh, screen so you folks can see it at, ho at uh, home there or on the road, wherever you may be uh, watching this show today. Now, here you go. Here is the Magic Extractor tool. Now, how does it work? Well, there's tools up here. There's brushes up here that we're going to use. And it tells you at the very top how you would use it. First, you click one or more times on the object you want to select as the foreground tool. So the foreground, and then there's the background. <coughs> the foreground is what we want to keep. That's what we're keeping, and that's what we're extracting. The background is what you're getting away from, is what you're getting rid of. If I hit this reset, let me see if, there we go. I just wanted to make sure it was fit into the screen here, the whole picture, so that's what that did. Okay. So remember, the foreground is what we're extracting. The background is what we're getting rid of. Let's do that. Here's the foreground. You can also make your brush sizes bigger if you use the left and right bracket key. So we want to keep uh, the girl on the little wooden horse. Your kids will do more crazy things when they're younger than as they get older. Once they get older, they don't do stuff like this anymore. If I ask her to get on there now, she would roll her eyes at me and she will run away. So again, this is easier because remember, we're not actually selecting. We're just, you're just coloring over. It doesn't have to be too perfect. I'm kind of weird because I've been doing this for so long. I like doing at least the edges of something. Uh, so if you pick up the edges, it's pretty important and uh, it makes it look really nice. So then we're going to choose the background. Okay, it's blue. And we're going to come over here and click the minus. And that's going to give us the background brush. All right. And now you can just go and go across. You don't have to select it all. Again, I like to get closer to the subject that I'm keeping just so it kind of knows. Yep. And you're saying, Jack, why don't you hook up your Wacom board? Well, or your Wacom. I should have, huh? But Jack doesn't do things like he should, right? So I'm using my mouse to do this. No special tools, folks. <coughs> Excuse me. So we're going to go ahead and take this. Take that out. Just like that. There we go. Okay, so we're not painting at all. You're just making a just a general uh, over, you know, going over it. And then what we need to do is click preview. You can click OK and it'll take it out. I like preview because I want to take a look at it before I submit it, basically. Hit preview and then let it do its work. That is how easy it is to make a selection. And remember, you've seen it here first. No, I'm just kidding. You've probably seen it somewhere else maybe, but that is how the Magic Extractor tool works. Once I click OK, and then if we just shut this off over here, this is, indicates a visible layer. We'll just shut that off. And now you can see that we actually have the girl, actually uh, my daughter, is now showing there. So there you have that. That is how easy it is to make an extraction. And then, you know, uh, to go one step further, since we do have a lot of new folks in here, um, let's just go down here and click on New Layer. And then you guys know you can uh, throw a new background in there. Uh, we'll just select a different color because I don't like black to be my background. And then just pull the layer up. And you can put her right on top of there. Um, then if you have anything like this up here, you know, if you're on there, you have anything up there like that, you can just use the magic or the eraser tool and just go over that and clean that up if you see anything that you had left in there from the other picture. <coughs> um. 
So that is how easy it is to do that, how easy it is to use that magic extractor tool. It's a great tool. Um, I probably don't use it as much as I could because I like to use the quick selection tool. That's just my tool of choice. But you're going to have your tool of choice also. I mean, you are. It's, it all depends what you like to use. So let's get up on the chat room again. And uh, we're going to uh, catch up there before I show you this last uh, part of our show this morning. I sure can close uh, Photoshop Elements here because we're done with it. All right, guys. So we're going to uh, come to that magical part that I told you about earlier. And that is um, how to install Actions um, the easy way. Now, I received a ton of emails, a ton of emails, um, asking me about actions and what the actions are, how they work, um, and everything. So, a lot of people had trouble installing these things. And if you know, I've been in computers for about 25 years now. So, for me, like saying open up this folder or this directory, uh, it might be a read only, so make sure it's not a read only, make sure it's unhidden find this database and I must be talking a different language to you than what you normally speak because you're not going to understand and you're going to get really, really confused. And I told my wife, I felt really bad about this. So she said, well, how are you going to remedy that? And I said, well, why don't I go ahead and write a software program uh, for you folks that need it? And uh, she said, well, what are you going to charge for that? And I said, I'm not going to charge anything because people that watch this show I'm glad that you watch my shows and, and I appreciate you being here so much that this is a way I can give back a little bit to you. So I thought I would go ahead and write this and I'm going to make it available today for you for download. Absolutely free. And then you let me know what you think about it, if it's worthwhile or not. So what is this program? Well, we talked last week about installing actions and what actions do. And after that, I received a thousand emails that said, Jack, I can't get it. I, I can't figure out where these actions should go or how what, where that database file is. And it's ridiculous. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to bring up my desktop. And I'm going to show you how this program works. And then we will show you how to uh, or where to find it. So let's see here. All right. Let's dissolve back into here. There we go. So the program is right here. And I'm trying to make a tighter selection on this, maybe. Um, yeah, let me see if I can open the program. I'm going to launch it. Okay. And I got to watch. This is actually Windows 7 running in what's called a virtual machine. So, uh, what we're going to do here now is we are going to. Uh, select a smaller area so maybe you can see this program running a little better okay let's see if we can get this uh, in here to show you how this works okay all right so this is the program that I came up with for you folks out there uh, if you want to use it that's fine it's very easy to use it is called Easy Action Loader. Great name I created for it because it's going to make it very easy for you to load your actions. Now, unfortunately, right now, um, I only wrote this. It's written for Windows 7. So if you have Windows 7, you're in luck. If you have XP, there's some more coding that I have to do because it's all different directories. So there's more coding that I have to, have to actually do to get the XP side to work. So what does it do? Well, what it does first thing we have to talk about is when we download the actions you see here just make sure I got a little bit more room here here we go I'm just looking here to see what you guys are seeing here I'm looking at my output when you download your actions they're going to come in a compressed folder so you do have to know how to unzip and I did try to write this into the program to unzip these but it there's a lot of lengthy code and we're not going to get into that so all you have to do is right click on it and you go to extract all now when you extract it like this sharpened one right here it is you're going to get this folder in this folder there's going to be stuff in here like text files uh, there might be instructions on it I want you to t delete everything out of that folder except 
what you need, the ATN and the PNG file. That's really all you need. The ATN is the action. The PNG is the PNG file. Okay, that is a, uh, a, a picture. So that's what the action uh, will show up with in your uh, Photoshop elements. So make sure you delete everything else in there. And now let's see what this will work with. Click the pull down menu and you choose what version you have. I wrote it for version 7, 8, 9, and 10. <coughs> so 7, 8, 9, and 10 is what it will work with. On this particular uh, virtual machine, I have version 8 and version 10 loaded. So we're going to put in 10. And now all I do now is select my action. So click on right here. And I have it on my desktop under actions. We're going to go to that one called sharpen. It's right here. And then sharpen. Right there. That's the folder where those two files are residing. That's what that is. Click OK. And then all I have to do is click on this button right here that says install action. And then this box will come up and say your action is now installed. Open elements and enjoy. Click on OK. If you want to install another action, just locate the next action and install that. So you can install as many actions when you're doing this at one time. Instead of installing it, opening up, seeing if it's there, installing it, opening up, seeing if it's there, just go ahead and load it up and you'll see it. it is there. So there you have it. Once you're done, just close that and then go ahead and open up Elements and then you're good to go. That uh, program is actually going to be there and you're actually going to have your actions loaded. Now it will take Elements time to open if you remember from last week's show because it's to rebuild that database. So it's going to take a little time to open that up. So hopefully you enjoyed that uh, little program I wrote for you there. We are going to check the chat room. I do want you guys to keep chatting here. I'm going to throw this little uh, this little two-minute uh, intermission commercial up there. Then I'll come back. We're going to recheck the chat room there, and uh, we're, then we'll close out the show. So let's go ahead and uh, play this. Like I said, it's new software I'm running here, so I want to make sure everything's working okay. So let's go ahead, and we're going to play this out. And uh, I'll be right back, so don't go anywhere. Uh, for the new people in there, this is just uh, about two minutes. It uh, gives me time to refill my coffee cup. gives you time to refill your drinks. And I'll be right back here. Uh, we'll uh, finish out the show with the chat room, see uh, if you have any questions or concerns about this week's uh, topics. And um, we'll go from there. Oh, wait. Hold it. Stop. Rewind. <laughs> Let's hold on a second there. Let's bring us back up here. So I did tell you uh, we were going to show you here actually where you can get this. Where else would I put it uh, but my website, right? JacksTechCorner.com. Oh, there we go. JacksTechCorner.com, and I put a new link here. For those who have been on my site, great. For those of you not been on my site, why not? You should have been there by now. Um, you go right here under special it's a new link I put on there and go to programs click on there it's going to tell you right here this program is absolutely free to install actions on your Photoshop elements if you are using only Windows 7 please only use it if you're using Windows 7 also I had to put this in there there's no warranty so if you load this and for some reason I don't know what kind of computer you're running uh, your computer shuts down or reboots or it's not my fault I didn't do it okay this computer's one. Uh, this program is 100% absolutely spyware and adware free. I have to make that disclaimer, um, and it's weird because I'm giving it to you. It's free. Um, it worked for me. I, there's a setup program I wrote for it, so when you get it, it'll do the install. It'll make the shortcut on your desktop, and go ahead and use it. It's a nice little program. Looking at building onto it, and uh, with your feedback, I'm gonna know if it's worth it or not. If it's worth me doing anything else with it. So I did want to send that out there to you. You had to know where it was. I'm sorry I forgot to say that before we switched uh, cameras there. So go to jackstechcorner.com and uh, grab that software today. Okay, like I said, we're going to throw this ad up here, and I uh, will be right back. Don't go anywhere. Hey, have you been looking for a great place to host your pictures? And I know there's a lot of picture sites out there that host them, like Flickr and all those, and Yahoo, and whatever else you have out there. But it's nice to have a place to call your very own home on the Internet. Let that home be hosted by Weebly, W-E-E-B-L-Y. Weebly is a great and powerful hosting service 
as well as a very easy drag and drop web builder site. So what you see is what you get, or WYSIWYG. So I know they host my website, and they've done a remarkable job, and I've been with them for quite a while, and I'm sure I'll continue to stay with them. So once again, it's Weebly. Sign up for a free account today, and I'm sure you'll be paying for an account and being with them permanently, such as I did. Also, check out this sponsor, Green Screen Wizard, written by Ken. Ken is an amazing programmer. What else can you say? Uh, he's written algorithms to make green screening a piece of cake. If you ever tried green screening or removing the green, you know, you always get that green cast and everything in Photoshop or Photoshop Elements. Well, Green Screen Wizard takes care of that. Uh, Ken took the time. He also is an amazing background shooter. In talking to Ken on the phone uh, for about an hour, a couple different times, Ken is a great person. He travels the world and he shoots backgrounds for you. So, you know, no longer do you have to buy all those expensive backgrounds. Just buy a kit from Ken, set the green screen up, take a picture, and then drop in any background you want. Once again, that's Green Screen Wizard for all your green screening needs. With that said, go to my website, jackstechcorner.com, and look for the sponsors links on the left. You want to click on the graphics, and that will take you to the sponsors links. When you use my website to get to them, that helps to show out, and I truly appreciate it, as well as then the sponsors know that you are coming from Jack's Tech Corner Show. And if you want to help even more, you can pick up a DVD. It will not only help the show, it helps you. You can learn uh, Photoshop elements. There's many, many tips and tricks in there that you're going to learn with. You don't have to worry about the internet speed then. All the videos are burnt onto the DVD. Or like many of you already did, you can also donate to the show. All donations of any size are greatly appreciated. And they help to buy new equipment as well as the software I need to continue to do these uh, videos for you. <coughs> so, thank you very much. And uh, let's go ahead and get back to Jack's Tech Corner and more learning. Okay, very good. Lost an earbud there. That's not very good. <laughs> All right, looks like I just made it back. That should have just ended right there. Now, we're going to switch over here real quick to the other camera. And uh, we are going to just check in with the chat room and see what you guys are talking about. If you have any questions, we can probably touch base on those. I know we're running over a little bit this morning. I'm sorry about that. Uh, it was a long run there. Now I'm getting coffee. Okay. Just uh, checking out the chat room here. Back with you guys. Okay. Uh, let's see. Scroll back up through here and see where we're at. Ah, Chicky, you got a new uh, Mac Mini. Congratulations. Sure you'll be happy with that. Uh, let's see. Hugh says, sweet program, Jack. Well, Hugh, go ahead and download it there. I'm glad you uh, enjoy that. Uh, let's see. Talking about uh, Chicky's new computer. That's fantastic. Great buys. 40% off stuff. Chicky Jack is my hero. Thanks, Chicky. Uh, well, yeah, with Photoshop Elements, that's great. I hope you uh, start to enjoy Photoshop Elements and go out there and grab a camera. Uh, I mean, you get a lot of feedback from the chat room there of what you can buy. and uh, It all depends on what pricing you want to. You know, what, whatever you want to buy is a good starter camera. So the trick is I'm trying to tell people now is, you know, um, not so much point and shoot, more either... It's called a hybrid DSLR, so either a hybrid DSLR camera, which is a, uh, a camera that's bigger on the front. They kind of look like these. They look like these cameras, so it's bigger on the front, but it, the lenses don't come off. That's a hybrid DSLR. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's better, or it's a more advanced than a point-and-shoot. Um, we still use point-and-shoots. I got one up there on top of the, my uh, desk. <coughs> You know, sometimes, hey, sometimes I shoot with my iPhone. I mean, the camera is whatever camera you have in your pocket, right? So, 
All right. Other than that, let's see here. Um, just going through there. Mary Jo, I've been on your site. Uh, yeah, I know. I've seen you there. Thank you very much for coming by. Um, Jake the Snake, Kevin's website link. Uh, just checking through with you folks here real quick. Uh, to do, to do, to do, Chicky. Really follow me, guys. Okay, Chicky. So we uh, we'll get some following for Chicky on her uh, Justin TV. Hey, if you're not following me, follow me on my channel too. By the way, a lot of you new folks in there coming by this morning, uh, follow me on Justin TV uh, because obviously you found us on Justin TV. So click on the little follow button, and anytime I go to broadcast, you're going to see that. Typical broadcast here uh, in this studio is 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, every Sunday morning is when we broadcast this show. Um, so I don't I do a lot of YouTube videos through the week, and that's kind of where my uh, where I sit with that because uh, this video does take a lot. The live video does take a lot more out of you, a lot more time than YouTube. Believe it or not, because by the time I get this done, then when I finish with you guys, I'm going to go back. I'm going to start editing all this footage down and uh, putting together. A recap show basically and my recap show will go up on YouTube so you'll be able to uh, recap it there um, so it does take more time a YouTube video like the three-minute video I shot yesterday with my iPhone I shot it with the iPhone I posted it to YouTube on the iPhone and the only thing I edited was the front and the back because when you turn the camcorder on and when you turn it off it's kind of silly to see that so I cut that off okay <coughs> Okay, and Kevin, I see what, you, what you're what you saying there, too. Um, you can click on my live show. The best way to get to this chat room here, we don't use the chat room for Justin TV because it gave me a lot of issues. I had a lot of trouble with people not being able to get in. It would take maybe four, and then we were shut off. We, we weren't allowed anymore. I don't know what happened. So I noticed a lot of Justin TV broadcasters going over to this lightirc.com. Uh, and lightirc allowed me to, allows you to build a room. I built a room. Uh, Jack's Tech Corner Room, and it allows us to be able to uh, host our chat room there. So if you go to live.jackstechcorner.com, that's where the chat room resides now. Uh, I put a player up there and the chat room, so it makes it really easy. Um, I use the pop-out chat because then I close the window because I don't, I can't view the show anyway when I'm doing it, so it doesn't make sense. Okay, folks, thank you very, very much. Uh, very, very humbled this morning to see that there was 21, 22 viewers in the channel this morning. Um, that has to be an all-time high, and I am very humbled that you came by and that you uh, viewed the show. So hopefully today you've learned a little bit about setting a custom white balance uh, on your cameras and you understand white balance. And also, um, now you know how to make a selection by using a, a tool it's kind of hidden in Photoshop Elements um, using that Magic Extractor tool. I'll tell you what, it's a great tool when you're having trouble extracting. Use it. Take your time. Use it and, like I said, mask off what you want. Mask off what you don't want. Preview it. Make sure you preview it and then go from there. And then the program I wrote, I just wanted to make it easier for you guys to install Actions. I mean, I think Actions are big to have on your computer. And hopefully you can get that downloaded and installed. It's absolutely free. Um, and I said I've tested it myself, but there's software is never uh, ever 100% test, tested until uh, you folks out there play around with it, you know, uh, because I'm the programmer, so sure it's going to work because I know how to click the buttons or maybe there's something I missed. But if there's any bugs, please report those and let me know, and I'll try to clear those up for you. Not a big deal. So until next Sunday, remember, folks, follow me on Justin TV. Click the little follow button on the bottom, and also... Watch the YouTube videos. Uh, if you're not subscribed to my YouTube videos, subscribe to those. It's a weird name. It's 4242 Techno Man. Please go ahead and uh, subscribe to my YouTube videos. And watch us. Mark your calendars here for every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're going to be here. I've been here now for, uh, this is what, 34 straight weeks. So we've been here. And uh, I've even done these shows on the road. Uh, if I'm in a hotel somewhere, I've I've put these shows out there and done them on the road. So there you have it.
So until next week, folks, as always, please remember, keep the shutters clicking. Keep those pictures coming out there, folks. Join our Facebook group, Jack's Tech Corner. Post some of your work there. I'd like to see more and more people in that group. Uh, and sign up there today and let, let us see your work. And keep the editors editing, you know. But remember, the best pictures in camera. Secondary is edit it and make it your own. So until next week, thanks again for joining. And I'll see you back here next Sunday morning at 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time for another Photography Weekly with Jack's Tech Corner. Bye for now.